Hello students, today we are looking at the cross price elasticity. That tells us if the goods are substitutes like Macs and PCs or complements, hot dogs and hot dog buns. So your book calls the cross price elasticity EC. Um, that notation is not entirely standard. Different books will use a different symbol for that. But we'll follow your book's notation for now. Percent change in QA, the quantity of good A, divided by the percent change in the price of B. So we're looking at how does the price of B influence demand for A. So we use our midpoint method approximation. Once again, in intermediate micro, if you go on to take that class, you'll see a calculus-based formula instead. With our approximation, the elasticity is change in the quantity of good A divided by the average quantity for good A. All that's divided by the change in the price of B over the average price for good B. So, First, a question for you guys to reflect upon. We use Macs and PCs as examples of substitutes. You don't probably have both, you buy one of them. Would you expect the cross price elasticity to be positive or negative? So go ahead and think about that and pause the video until you think you have an answer. When you're ready, press play and we'll see if you're right. Okay, so here's how we'll work through it. We first use the law of demand. Let's say max get more expensive. Law of demand says that if something gets more expensive, we buy less of it. So quantity demand for max should go down. Now max and PCs are substitutes. So I gotta get a computer it's got to be a Mac or it's got to be a PC. If I'm buying fewer Macs, that means I'm more likely to be buying more PCs. So the quantity of PCs should rise. So first, price of Macs goes up, means buy fewer Macs, and that leads to buying more PCs. So get this positive relationship between the price of Macs and the quantity of PCs. So you plug that into this formula, you get a positive over a positive, so we get a positive number. The general lesson, when you have substitutes, then the cross price elasticity is positive. Possible question from the audience. How did you know to start with a price increase in max rather than a price increase in PCs? The answer is that it doesn't matter. If you've done the same thought experiment with the price of PCs going up, you would get the same conclusion. Let's just verify quickly. If the price of PCs were to rise, law of demand says buy fewer PCs. Again, buy less of something when it gets more expensive. If we're buying fewer PCs, we're going to start buying more Macs instead that means a price increase in PCs ultimately led us to buy more Macs. Again, positive relationship between price of PCs and quantity of Macs to get a positive number of that formula. If you talked about a price decrease instead, again, you get the same result. So it doesn't matter where you start. So pick price of one good, whether it goes up or down, doesn't matter and see how it affects the quantity of the other good, it'll be the same either way. So the other kind of related good out there is complements. Goods are complements if you get them together like hot dogs and hot dog buns. So would you expect, based on our formula and our definition, would you expect 
the cross price elasticity be positive or negative for hot dogs and buns. Go ahead and pause the video while you think about that. All right, so let's go through a thought experiment again. So let's say that the price of hot dogs rises. Just as before, it doesn't matter if you start with the price of hot dogs or the price of hot dog buns, or whether they go up or whether they go down, you get the same answer any way you approach it. Let's just go at this way. Hot dogs get more expensive. Law of demand says we buy fewer hot dogs. Well, the whole point of buying a bun is that you have to have a hot dog to go along with it. So if I'm not buying as many hot dogs, I don't need as many buns. Quantity of buns is going to fall. So increase in price of hot dogs leads to a decrease in the quantity of buns. Plug that in over here and you get a negative number over a positive number. We all know a negative over a positive gives you a negative. Cross price elasticity is, in general, negative for complements. All right, moving on to our final section, the price elasticity of supply. So your book calls that ES. We'll use that midpoint formula approximation. Again, Intermediate Micro gives you a more precise calculus-based version, but we're in principles, so we'll just use this instead. The price elasticity of supply is percent change in quantity to supplied divided by percent change in price. We get that by taking the change in quantity supplied and dividing that over average quantity supplied. That all gets divided by change in price over average price. Now the law of supply, another hugely important result from chapter three, tells us something about the price elasticity. It says that price increasing is gonna cause quantity supply to increase. You should always get a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. You should always get a plus over a plus or a minus over a minus. So this thing overall is always going to be positive. Now, some of our books are text by cause the supply elasticity or the elasticity of supply. So be aware of that other terminology out there. So there are several cases that mirror the price elasticity of demand. One of them is we have perfectly elastic supply. So supply is extremely sensitive to changes in price. If price were to drop even by a single penny, then we suddenly stop supplying altogether. Supply cannot possibly get any more sensitive than that. So how you can unify that graph with the math. So we're saying that percent change in Q is infinite over even the smallest percent change in price. So you have infinity over something finite. Infinity over finite is infinity. So perfect elasticity means infinite elasticity of supply. That's our first case. There's also relatively elastic supply. That's when supply elasticity is greater than one, though it's still finite. It means that supply is sensitive to price. So supply is going to change more than one for one in response to a price change. You can see here in our picture that a small price change gives you a really big quantity change. So the math, let's go back to our formula. So we're saying that with relatively 
elastic supply, you get a more than one for one response from quantity. That means that, say, a 1% increase in price down here might give you a 2% increase in quantity supplied. So you get two over one, so elasticity would be two in that case. So cases like this one where supply is responsive to price, as you would say, very responsive to price, give you elasticities that are greater than one. Now, relatively inelastic supply looks like this. So you have a steeper slope here. It means that when price drops by a lot, quantity barely changes. So supply is not very responsive to price. So your elasticity will be bounded between one and zero. It could be something like a 10% increase in price only gives you a 5% increase in quantity. If you plug those numbers in, 10% increase in price, 5% increase in quantity, you get five over 10, which is half, less than one. So you can see that this range of values corresponds to this kind of graph where you have a steep slope. Last possibility is perfectly inelastic supply. That means that quantity does not respond at all to price changes. So change in quantity is always going to be 0%. Plug that in back here, get 0% over change in price. 0% over number is going to be 0. So your elasticity is 0 when you have perfectly inelastic supply like you have over here. The graph shows you quantity just never changes, it's always over here. Now the elasticity of supply is determined by two factors, flexibility and time. I saw a video a while ago about how Steinway pianos are made, and it's quite a lengthy process. They do a lot of stuff by hand, and you got to get your wood in advance, and you got they always go for the highest quality wood, and it takes time. You got to put it in storage while you're waiting to use it, and the process is just very lengthy. If something were to happen to the price that was quite a big change, then there's so little flexibility that, in the meantime, there's not very much the supplier could do. So they're probably going to have relatively inelastic supply. It takes many months for them to produce a piano. Time also affects the elasticity of supply just as it did with the elasticity of demand. As time goes on, suppliers get more flexible, which makes the elasticity go up. We talked earlier about how time affected the elasticity of demand for oil. It's the same for supply. So at first, supply is fairly inelastic. It's hard for oil producers to make big changes on short notice. Long term, though, they develop things like fracking or other techniques that help them change their production. In the long run, suppliers could then become much more responsive to price than they could over a shorter time horizon. So that wraps up chapter four on elasticity. Be sure to tune in for our next episode in which we look at chapter five. In the meantime, take care and stay healthy.